Hornby's old HST. Uh, now it may be pale in comparison to the modern updated version um, that has been released by Hornby um, from 2008 onwards. But does that mean that this old example of um, Hornby engineering should be left behind and ignored? No. In this um, how to do it guide as to how to update and um, improve the old Hornby HST I'll be showing you all the different steps necessary to bring it up to the level of the current day model um, and maybe even beyond in some ways. Um, so we'll be looking at things like the lights, um, improving the look of the model and improving the performance of the model. So, um, before we begin we'll take a look at exactly what kind of model we're um, looking at here. So, as, as I said, this is the old Hornby HST, um, and the, the, the exact model was first brought out around 1980, um, and continued to be produced right up until, I think it was around 2007, in the railroad range, um, and it had various updates throughout that time. Um, and this is one of the later models, this comes from around 2000, um, and so you can see in Virgin Trains livery, this is the power car. Um, so we'll take a good look around the model. So from the front, there's these uh, light clusters um, that have filament bulbs behind there and light up only when you drive them in one direction, um, forwards. There's no uh, rear light when the train's going in reverse for the other power car. Um, the detailing's fairly good on the bogey, but nowhere near as good as the modern offering. Um, and yeah, it's got the general um, looks of HST. It does look really good. Um, there isn't many problems with it. I mean, some people say that the front end isn't exactly right, but I think it looks fine. Um, and the roof detail is very good too. Um, and while we're on about the HST, it's of course essential to go on about the Mark III's too. So this tutorial is also dealing with these advanced coaches. If I just uncouple it there. So, yeah, these are the later versions. Uh, very advanced, these, actually. Um, I think they're still in the Hornby main range. Um, so they look really good as it is, as you can see. So you've got all the little details on the door and everything. So they don't need as much work as the power cars themselves. Um, but even so. Uh, so we'll move on to what we're going to be doing with the power cars. Um, now, from the front, um, the lights never looked particularly good, um, and they weren't exactly um, constant, they kept flickering. So we're going to be having to repaint the lenses and fit directional lights to them. We're also going to paint the windscreen wiper, and weather the bogies and undercarriage, maybe some of the detail on top, and have a thorough look at cleaning the wheels and the motor inside there, as well as um, cleaning the wheels on the dummy car, and doing exactly the same for that. So we'll begin with dealing with the lights at the front of the locomotive. Right, so let's move the carriages away. Um, now, yes, we've got the power car here. As you can see the lights at the front there. Just put it roughly on the rails. And what we're doing is fitting the directional lights on. Now in here are some little circuit boards from Black Cat Technologies, which you can buy on the internet, um, which are really good representations of directional lights. As you can see, they're tiny little things. I'll just put the wrapper under there. Tiny little circuit boards for the HST, which slot into the cab where the filament light would be, um, which we need to fit now. Um, yes, yeah, so there's one for the um, power car and one for the dummy car. So if I just put the dummy car's one over there, um, this one we'll use for the power car. So uh, we've got the full instructions here from Black Cat Technologies, um, which I'll take you through um, according to the guide there. Uh, so first of all it says to take the body off of the uh, locomotive. Right, um, welcome back. Now this is a particularly difficult process. What you have to do is you have to work from the back and slide it in a small screwdriver or something um, into the gap there. Uh, there's five clips that attach, one at the back and along the side here. You have to work your way along. Um, so I've just slotted out the back one. It is really fiddly, especially if it's a new 
chassis. Um, so you've just got to be careful. Um, apply a reasonable amount of force, but don't force anything. Oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> Difficult to uh, hold it in front of the camera at all times, so do excuse me if I go slightly out of the picture. Right, there we go. Ah, just put the body clean to one side. Now, let's take a good look inside the locomotive. Um, as you can see here, it's got um, the motor at the back, the big Ringfield motor, the pickups from the front, and uh, this little diode here that only allows the current through in one direction. That makes sure that the lights don't always shine. So apparently we need to bridge that. Uh, a bit of right, tape first there. you need to remove the seats. Now, you can see they are they were clipped into the wires, so just put them to one side. Um, now you turn the body, and you've got to pull these pins out, apparently. Um, Rather stiff. Oh, there we go. Now remember that one's on the left-hand side of the locomotive, and the black one is on the right. So red, red, left, black, right. Yep. Um, and then work the filament bulb out, and uh, slot in the circuit board. Right. That's the bulb removed. Um, sorry, I couldn't show you that. It was, it was very difficult to hold it in front of the camera. I'm trying to get this in focus. There we go. Um, basically, it's a very fiddly job to to get these wires in. Um, so if you pull the wires out, you need to slide the circuit board in, it should rest just level with the little plastic back cover there, and push them down, make sure they contact with the edge of those little bits at the bottom of the circuit board, you can see just where the larger, wider part of the wire is, there. Um, there we go. Um, and now the lights do work, you can see they aren't on there, but they are on when you go forwards. So I'll just lift up the motor, there. These are the cool white lights. You can get warm white ones too, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so now we need to bridge the diode in order to make sure that the um, the red lights come on too. So that's a little diode there. So I'm just going to wrap some wire around that. And hopefully make sure the lights work um, red when it's going reverse too. Right, I've managed to fit the make the um, back lights, the red lights work. Um, so I took did several attempts. First I tried this stuff that looks like copper wire, but turns out isn't copper, um, so it doesn't conduct electricity. And I tried this um, sort of wire encased in rubber, insulated wire, but I couldn't really get that off and it was too small. Um, so eventually I settled for the strand of an LED, which I had going spares, you can see that I've cut one off, uh, just tidy up the mess of the other bits. And um, what I did was I, uh, well it's difficult to see too clearly, uh, there we are. If you see just over the diode, I wrapped it round either side and curled it round and used a pair of little pliers to um, round it off and turn it into a little loop so it wouldn't fall off. Um, so I'll just put it on and to prove we fitted the lights, we've now got, and I'll lift up the back, the red lights. Fantastic. Even on really low speeds they're bright. You can see that and then the white lights, very bright, so really good. Fantastic. Um, so that's how to fit the lights to your old HST. I can now refit the seat and then the body, which you must do very carefully. Make sure you don't break that as well. Um, just make sure you slot it in all the little clips around the side and turns, starting from the front. Um, and I fit the same to the dummy car, which is identical, except it doesn't have the motor at the back, so it should be easier. Um, yeah, so that's fitting the lights. Ah, now I nearly forgot this rather key stage in upgrading the HST. Before you refit the body, make sure you have the little cab here, and you can now paint the inside of the cab. Now it's difficult to see on the camera there because it's so um, light, but basically you can just get your paintbrush, it's a bit wet, um, dip, before having dipped in the water. Um, you can see all these little dials and things. Now you could do this from pictures to make sure it was accurate, but I'm just doing it as I'd imagine it would be. Uh, you can see that I've painted that red little lever here red. Just whatever sort of colour arrangement in the cab looks good. Um, yep, and I can finish that off. So you can see I've done the little bits red there. I might paint the dashboard grey and the seats uh, grey or something, or BR blue or something like that. Anyway, I'll show you in a moment when I finish painting the uh, cab. Right, so while the um, the cabs are drying, the next bit is to paint behind the light clusters and on the horn grille and the windscreen wiper. 
So I'll just take you through that process with the following pictures. Right, so while we're waiting for the um, the blackening out of the lights on the front of the cab to dry, um, we can quickly go into the uh, part with making the performance of the old Hornby HT improve. Um, so one of the major factors here, keeping clean wheels. This is the uh, power car that you've got the front bogey and the rear bogey with the traction tyres at the top. And what I find is best here is a piece of hardboard which is rough on one side and smooth on the other. You can just break a bit off a larger sheet um, and just rub it across the wheels. Um, it's hard to do this in front of the camera. Um, rub it across the wheels with the rough side um, one wheel at a time um, and that'll pick off all the dirt and keep spinning it slowly and that makes the wheels shiny as you can see there um, and much cleaner and they'll pick up a lot better. Um, you can see it's left behind so it will wear out the hardboard. You've got a slight bit of excess carbon and dirt there on the edge. But that helps ensure um, good pickups across all the wheels of the HST. Right, on to the final part of upgrading the old Hornby HST and that is um, weathering the uh, the power cars and the uh, coaches. Um, now this is an optional stage of course because some people don't like them being weathered but uh, the following pictures should show a step-by-step -step guide as to how to have them weathered form. Right, and having followed those weathering steps, you can then refit the lenses. And as you can see here, they look really good. With the black background, it really improves the look of the old HST. You can see inside the cab, you've got the detail there, and the weathering across it, on the roof and on the undercarriage. Really does improve the look. So now, all that remains is to test the lights. Right, so now it's time to test the lights. So, it's the final stage, and there they are. Fantastic. Right, so that's the forwards direction. Um, and that's the reverse direction. So really good lighting there. You can see it goes up and down with the power. But that looks fantastic on these old Hornby HSTs. So really, really pleased with that. Really good lighting. Right, well there's the lighting and, uh, and that's the finished model. Um, fully updated and uh, up to today's standards I think. Really, really good and uh, certainly the whole HST stands up well compared to what Hornby now offers with the latest HST. So that's really good. Right, well I hope you found this um, guide to updating the old Hornby HSTs useful. Um, if you do have any more questions about um, updating the old Hornby HST please do feel free to get in contact by commenting below the video. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time at www.modelrailroadreviews um, from Will here um, with more reviews and um, um, super detailing videos um, and realism features in the future. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, bye!